the Mini Countryman isn't quite so mini anymore. New generation for 2025, and what that brings is additional height, additional length, additional width. There is more power beneath the hood. There's also more torque, and around the rear, there's about 25% more cargo space. So what else has Mini done? Well, let's jump in the car and find out just exactly how big the Mini Countryman has gotten, both in terms of size and advancement in technologies. Welcome to driving.ca, I'm Jay Canna and I'm with the 2025 Mini Countryman S. And S is their base trim. There's a JCW variant with more horsepower and torque and more fun bits. And there is an upcoming all electric version. But let's focus on what we have here, which is the S trim. So power wise, it runs up a two liter turbocharged four cylinder engine. Horsepower comes in at 241 and torque comes in at 295 pound feet. That is a significant increase over the outgoing model. Specifically, we have 52 more horsepower here and 89 more pound-feet of torque. This runs off a seven-speed dual-clutch transmission and it is all-wheel drive. It's called the All-4, which is mini-speak for what their all-wheel drive is. Let's touch on fuel consumption before we get into the driving dynamics itself. So in liters per 100 kilometers, we are at 9.8 on the city, 7.3 on the highway, and a combined total of 8.7. It runs off a 54-liter fuel tank and it takes premium fuel. Not too bad, not the best in class by any means, but respectable. For Mini's largest offering, the drive feel is surprisingly impressive and unfortunately there's no paddle shifters and I don't really know how many people would have actually used paddle shifters or how many people actually do use the paddle shifters, but they're not here. But as far as regular city driving goes, it, it's pretty nimble, it's still easy to park, easy to drive. Despite growing in all key dimensions, it's taller, it's longer, it's wider out in the country back roads and in rural areas, through all the twists and turns, the Mini fares extremely well. It's very well planned, it stays very flat through those tight twists and turns that we have. It stays extremely flat, not a lot of body roll, and it really hugs the ground, and that speaks to the fun factor of Minis. For a vehicle that's mature and grown up, it still retains a little bit of that fun factor. Now, it's not as fun as, let's say, the three-door, but the Countryman holds its own as far as being able to have an enjoyable drive. And Mini's gone all in on making sure that this blends practicality and performance as well, even on the S trim with the lower output figures. Now, as far as road noise goes, a little bit comes in. It's still a premium car, not a luxury vehicle. That's what your BMWs are for, but it's not too bad. If you do find the road noise to be a little on the intrusive side, there's an optional package that gives you an upgraded premium hardened card and audio system, which sounds absolutely fantastic. There's plenty of passing power to be had here. Short overhangs make handling fare extremely well. And just because it's a small crossover, it doesn't mean that there doesn't have to be any fun to it. And that's Mini's whole motif with their vehicles. They're small, they're cute, they're fun to drive. They have these cute and cheeky commercials and advertisements. And again, even though it's their largest offering ever, I think that they've struck a really good balance between enjoyable road manners. It's not dull to drive, it's not boring by any means, but it still has loads of cargo space, all sorts of new modern technology and you know, respectable looks. It's still a mini, a couple of tweaks here and there, but more on that later on in the video. So to wrap up the driving side of things, there's more than enough power here in the S trim. I don't know if you need the JCW option with the 312 horsepower and same 295 pound of torque. There's not a lot of guesswork when the transmission goes up and down gears. There's none of that muddy area um, that some other vehicles in this class have. It drives exactly as advertised. A healthy dose of fun, healthy dose of practicality, gets it to and from. Fuel consumption isn't great, not awful, and I can see the allure to it if you do want to have something in this class with just a little more excitement on the driving dynamic side. On the outside, it's still a very familiar shape. However, it has grown in all three key dimensions. So it is 5.1 inches longer, 2.4 inches taller, and 0.8 inches wider. Every vehicle when they enter a new generation grows in at least one of those dimensions, and there is more power like we have here. Interestingly, on the C-pillar, there's a little bit of a block design on it, 
And if you've thought, have I seen that somewhere else? Well, you have. It's on the Land Rover Defender. I'm not saying the Defender and the Countryman are the same vehicle at all. However, they have this similar little design on the C-pillars. Now, around the rear, the big thing that I noticed are the turn signals. And Mini lets you change the design of them. There's three different options, and that's you know, all fun and, and great as far as a party trick goes. But the old Minis had the turn signals where the arrows pointed in, which was you know, always an interesting source of discussion on forums and on social media, and they've fixed that. Up front, you can change the patterns as far as your daytime running lights go. Same three ways, and they match with the rear as well. So, a bit of a fun party trick there. The headlights have an animation when you lock and unlock the vehicle. Very BMW-esque, you know, unsurprisingly. But it's a nice little added touch. And previously, where it was a perfectly round shape with no lines at all, for the headlights for this generation minis added a little bit of an angular side to it so it's still oval in shape but you can see that there's a little more texture to it it's not quite the perfectly round shape as it was before the exterior door handles are very bmw-esque as in being flush to the body and it has the proximity sensors as well you just reach underneath open it up and i think that is much better than having anything overly engineered like a lot of vehicles have now where the handle pops out or moves. It's just a nice, simple, clean way. It looks good, but yet it's functional, and there's a pretty low chance of it freezing in colder temperatures. With design being subjective, I will say that I like the look of the new Countryman. It keeps the elements of familiarity that it had with the previous generation, but it's got just enough modern touches to it to show that there have been changes and there has been attention to detail put in as far as the new body style. Depending on how you put your Mini Countryman together, you can get 18, 19, or 20 inch wheels. What I have here, spec by BMW slash Mini Canada, is the 20 inch wheel selection. And I think the rim design looks absolutely beautiful. You know, I think rims are underrated. I think that it can really make or break the appearance of a vehicle. But again, with design being subjective, just because I think something's wonderful and gorgeous, you may not. The biggest changes here are on the interior, and there's a lot of them. So let's start with the centerpiece, which is their all new 9.4 inch OLED circular screen, which they say is a world's first. Generally, I like it. It's fairly well laid out, with the exception of a couple of things. Let's go through those first. To change your temperature, it's a thin line to the left on the bottom for the driver and a thin line at the bottom on the right for the passenger. You have to be really precise with it. I wish it was a little larger in size so I wouldn't have to take my eyes off the road for too, too long uh, as far as finding the right specific temperature that I want. On the bottom, there's a fixed bar and the little fan is on the left side of that and that lets you change the direction of the air and the intensity of the fan speed. I wish there was an easier way to do that where I wouldn't have to tap twice into it. Maybe rejig the layout of the infotainment system, but it's what we have here. And yes, there are voice controls, but it's not always faster. The layouts are intuitive and it's swipe based and there's not a lot of extra digging to get to what you want. Again, there is that fixed bar at the bottom that's got your fan speed and your audio and your home button and your maps and your phone. And here is a part that I think is extremely well engineered. It's the different experiences, which is many speak for drive modes. As you go through them, you can have the option for a full speedometer for the infotainment screen, or you can just tap the actual speed itself and the speed stays, your power stays, and your fuel stays as far as readouts go, but you get access to the rest of the infotainment options. So right now I am in the fan screen. So I'm gonna tap the speed itself. And now I have my full speedometer and my fuel and everything's just enlarged and it gives me a good clear look. Now I'm gonna duck away from the infotainment for a quick moment to say that yes, there is a head up display that comes standard and it gives you your three key things. It gives you your power, it gives you your speed, it gives you your fuel and you can have the speed limit for where you are uh, if you so choose to have it. Now, I think that's a smart move because having it only in the middle of the cabin isn't the best idea because your eyes are off the road, even 
if for an extra half second, quarter second, but having it straight ahead of you with a head-up display or in massive 9.4 inch size here through the infotainment screen is a good balance of both. For as good as the screen looks and as high res as the graphics are and running off Mini's operating system 9, it's still a little slow and laggy. And is it a first row problem? Absolutely. But just having that little bit of extra speed and bringing it up to modern standards would make it an ideal infotainment system on the whole. Let's jump into the mini experiences and there are several of them. So let's start all the way at the top with the go-kart. Take a listen. I know there was a bit of a delay there. Funny, I just talked about that, but it says woohoo. I don't think that's it on the cute side. So everything goes to uh, black, white with this little flare of red and the performance side is amped up a little bit and it's just that sport mode for lack of a better term. You don't get any extra power, power is fixed, but it has the increased responsiveness. And let's take a listen. It still retains that, uh, that fun mini sound. So the next one going down from um, go-kart, one more, come on, is core. And that's your normal mode. And that's where I think almost, sorry to interrupt you, fun sound. <laughs> Every time you change uh, the experience mode, uh, you do get a different sound uh, that accompanies it. So core is your normal mode. And I think again, everyone's gonna live there. It's the most well-balanced. It gives you everything you need and just, very very comfortable next up after core we have green and that is your well that's your green mode that's your eco mode nice little peaceful sound that comes out of that and let's go down one more to come on see the lag isn't great vivid here comes the sound it's a little on the colorful side and interesting note the head-up display is in full color and it matches the color of the infotainment system. I think that is just an absolutely wonderful, great attention and detail that they have here. All right, let's go to the next one. So down from Vivid, we have Timeless. And good on you, Mini, for, pick for picking all of the fun words. I keep expecting the sound to happen as soon as I change the experience, but... That's okay. So it's got the old school dial and uh, it's beige and it looks pretty cool. So let's go down one more to, come on, one more to balance. So the seat massager kicks in, the sunroof closes, sorry, sunshade closes, and it's just giving you this nice relaxed experience. I don't like seat massagers at all. So this is extremely <laughs> uncomfortable for me right now. I'm going to go from balance to trail, push down and I'm gonna be quiet and wait for the sound this time. Eh, a little bit of rain sounds, a little bit of nature sounds. So. I have to kind of manually override the seat massager because it, I don't like it and it keeps going. So let me get rid of that and I am back to a comfortable uh, seating position. So I think it's a cute little gimmick that they did. Uh, is it over-engineered? Eh, maybe, you know, I, I would say it's a little over the top, but it adds a little bit of personality to the countryman that it may not otherwise have. The door panels on the dashboard are made from recycled materials and it looks cool. There's a nice little fade from brown to blue on the door panels. It's a straight blue across the dashboard and a straight blue for the rear seats. The drawback is it's kind of uncomfortable and I know everybody is supposed to drive at nine and three, but some people will put their arm up like this and it's pretty, it's like carpet. It's, it's uncomfortable. So. Again, I know that there's a proper way to drive, but if you are the type of person who puts their left elbow up on the door panel, well, it's not gonna be the most comfortable if you're wearing short sleeves. The seats are made from Veskin, which is a synthetic leather that's made from recycled material. Depending on the trim, you can get Veskin and cloth or just straight Veskin itself. Uh, the sunroof is standard, and I think that's really important to open up the cabin feel here. And it's the big panoramic dual pane sunroof. Front part opens up and the rear part is fixed. 
So speaking of that, let me reopen that sunshade that was closed with the balance drive mode, sorry, experience mode. Uh, along the bottom, we have a little bank of buttons and it's your gear selector, parking brake, engine start stop, the experiences and a volume knob. I didn't mind the toggles before. I'm not a big fan of everything being so minimalized here, but it's still the new way for many and all the key things are here. Uh, a little fun fact, the engine, you can either turn it to the right or to the left to get it started. Um, that's a cute little attention to detail I find there. And just below that, you have your parking cameras, your hazard lights and your max for your defroster for the front window and the uh, rear defroster as well. And the most important thing here is there's a shortcut button. Driver assistance is one and drivetrain and chassis is the other. The most important thing there is gonna be that's how you activate and deactivate your auto start stop. There are some fun party tricks here in the dashboard in front of the passenger. When you change your experience modes, there are lights embedded in there and it's a really cool look. And it just adds that extra little bit of visual sensation to a vehicle. And I think it's well done. It wouldn't be so appealing if it was flooded with lights like Mercedes has in some of their vehicles. I think this is just the right amount of balance showing the, again, the cool technology where they're able to embed lights behind this recycled material in the dashboard. These have the upgraded sports seats, so they're pretty comfortable. I can't imagine the base seats being uncomfortable, but I'm happy that Mini Canada did spec these with the upgraded seats. A bit of a quirk here is there's a strap in place of the middle spoke on the steering wheel. I'm good on Mini for being creative with that kind of stuff. Now it's not flapping around. It's, it's very, very taut to the wheel itself. I don't think it does anything other than look good because you know, if that gets cut or frayed or whatever, um, I don't think Mini's gonna put a lot of weight in that as far as having an operational steering wheel. Rear seats are very comfortable. I can sit behind myself without any issue and back to that panoramic sunroof, it lets a lot of light in for that second row of passengers. So good job on making that a standard piece of equipment here, Mini, well done. In addition to the head-up display and panoramic sunroof, other standard features include heated front seats, wireless Apple CarPlay, wireless Android Auto, and wireless charging. On the cargo side of things, Mini said it's grown by 25%. So when the seats are up, you get 460 liters of cargo space. And then when you put those second row of seats down fully with the 402040, that more than triples to 1,450 liters of cargo space. Right away, that tells me that that's a key contributor as to how spacious and comfortable those rear seats are. Plus, if you really need to put the seats down to move something, you know, whether it's often, sometimes, or once every never, know that there is quite a lot of cargo space here. And last note in that section of the vehicle, there is a temporary spare tire. For as good as my memory is, it's not as good as what it used to be. So I've pulled over and I'm gonna go through some pricing with you. So the MSRP for the 2025 Mini Countryman S is $45,590. This has the specific Premier Plus line for $4,000. Highlights of that include an interior camera, the Driving Assistant Pro, 360 cam, and the Harman Kardon audio system. There's a $2,000 favorite style option. It's a cute name, very on brand for many. And that includes the upgraded sport seats, like I mentioned, a black roof liner, the vibrant silver exterior trim. It looks copper slash bronze to me, but if they want to call it vibrant silver, so be it. Um, and it includes either uh, 18 or 19 inch wheel designs, depending on what you want. There's also a $500 option for a silver roof and mirror caps, a $600 paint job called Smoky Green, and an $800 option for 20 inch wheels. I think the rim design looks absolutely beautiful here. So as an as tested price overall, we are at $53,890. The Freight and PDI as per Mini Canada's website is $2,762. Little on the eye-watering side, but this is the Mini that's made in Germany now because it shares a platform with the X1. A couple of interesting notes here. The X1 itself starts at $45,800, which is only $210 more than what we have here. And if you want the JCW option with more horsepower, same torque, 
but mechanically a little different, more performance-based, that's an extra $10,300. So I think the price is right for the S trim, which is this. I think it packs a lot of value. And Mini's done pretty well in putting together a well-packaged vehicle that's on the relatively affordable side. Overall, the 2025 all-new Mini Countryman does a lot of things well, both from its increased size to the increased cargo capacity to the boost in power, and it still has that fun-to-drive factor, actually more so than the outgoing generation did. There might be a bit of a steeper learning curve to get the hang of the new technology, specifically through that 9.4-inch circular OLED screen, but with anything, the more you do it, the better you'll get at it. It'll be interesting to see how the Mini Countryman fares against its platform, mate the BMW X1, seeing as they're only a couple of hundred dollars apart as far as starting price goes. For driving.ca, I'm Jay Canham. For more news, reviews, and information you can use on compact crossovers, both in the luxury market and the mainstream market, visit our website, which is driving.ca, and we welcome you to engage with us on our social media platforms.